SMT Nation, we back. Nation, in today's edition of the SMT YouTube channel content, we are going to do a segment called Wolf Tickets, a spinoff of Wolf Tickets. For those of you that know what Wolf Tickets are, you're going to really enjoy this video. Some of you may not know what that, that means. Go ahead and go Google search it. What are Wolf Tickets? Uh, so that way you understand what we're doing here in today's video. But we're going to call them Wolf Tickets today because of Wolf who is a uh, network executive, the network leader over at T-Mobile, and he's selling Wolf tickets. We got Wolf tickets. All right, let's talk about that here in today's video. All right, link for the article from Fierce Wireless down in the description as we tear apart his statements on networking. Lying and capping. All right, let's do this, guys. All right, link in the article, ways to support us down there as well. Okay, so not new. This actually dates back previously to... Uh, Neville Ray, the former president of technology at T-Mobile, they've been pushing this narrative for a long time. The superiority of 2.5 gigahertz spectrum and T-Mobile's just general approach to networking uh, in the industry. For starters, folks, uh, you know, T-Mobile coined the term layer cake, and that goes back to the Neville Ray days in which they described this three-piece network approach to building out 5G networks. So you have your low band, you have your mid band and then you have your millimeter wave just in a in a general kind of look at it perspective uh t-mobile has done basically the first two parts of that uh they obviously started with their low band with 600 megahertz that doesn't really do anything right the same performance on lt or 5g it's not really worth mentioning just the fact that it's coverage right indoor propagation works good inside uh buildings and stuff like that and then you have you know, um, your mid band, which is your kind of best of both world scenarios, which you get propagation, indoor work, uh, you know, working well and, and also capacity because there's bandwidth there. Uh, so and then you have millimeter wave, which T-Mobile hasn't done much with uh, very specific locations. They haven't really scaled it. Uh, you know, they don't really own and operate fiber anyway. So it's and they don't have like the relationships or the kind of the ownership of the poles and stuff to really do millimeter wave at a large scale. But it's been something that's been kind of avoided by them for the most part. Uh, they have really tried to do everything with mid band. Anyways, that's kind of the whole concept of the Slayer cake. Uh, they have completely leveraged the capacity of their network on 2.5 gigahertz. A lot of us here within the YouTube space that do network testing like myself, uh, as well as Carlos has tech shout out to him, his YouTube channel. We've tested all these different frequencies extensively. The N41 piece, the 2.5 gigahertz, we've tested, you know, C-band extensively, millimeter wave, and we've, we're all coming to the same conclusions. There are levels of effectiveness for the capacity and the experiences and the quality of these connections. So we know what's real, right? And you can know what's real too. All you gotta do is you, you test the services yourself and you see who's doing a nice job of networking, right? And something we've learned, and this goes back to the Neville Ray days, is that T-Mobile spins a narrative, right? They, they've always done this. It's, it's what they do. It's part of their whole marketing. Here's a quote from Ulf, a.k.a. Wolf Tickets, a.k.a. Ulf Tickets. I know my competitors are challenged because they're up in the C-band, which is 30% lower radius if you look at it from a coverage point of view. I want to tear this down. All right, Ulf Tickets, we've all been using C-band for the better part of the last couple of years. And we've all been using T-Mobile's N41, 2.5 gigahertz, for the better part of four years. And some of us even longer because we had Sprint, right? I can't find a shred of evidence to prove that there is any superiority in any way, shape, or fashion between you know this comparison of 2.5 gigahertz N41 to C-band. In fact, in all of my testing, and, and this goes back years of compiling data and analyzing performance, the uplink superiority of C-band continues to shine. So I'm not really sure what he means by this because maybe he's just looking at the frequency, right? And saying, well, 2.5 gigahertz is a lower frequency. Therefore, theoretically, it should be, you know, have this better propagation and range but it simply is just not the case in real world application, especially when you take in things like massive MIMO and other tools and strategies and technologies that enhance coverage and 
quality of connection. So I look at all those things and then I look at the performance across many markets in the US. This doesn't really show, right? I've, I mean, we've tested N41 that has worked for five, six, seven, eight miles. We've tested N77 C band, which has worked for the same amount of range. We've tested the quality of connection. We've seen interference issues. We have seen everything. We can't find data to suggest this statement is actually true. So this statement that he's making doesn't really hold water, right? And another thing that, and this goes back to the Neville Ray era, was that, you know, Verizon and especially Verizon, but also AT&T were going to have to increase their densification efforts in order to plug up the gaps that their network would have because C-band doesn't reach. And that has been completely, you know, the, that has been completely stomped out and is just not true. If the carriers are going to increase their density, it's because they have covered uh, capacity needs. It's not necessarily because of an inability of a frequency to propagate. It's just not the case, right? And to prove to you, and I've said this before on many shows, on many, you know, episodes and on podcasts, to prove to you that T-Mobile is being disingenuous. T-Mobile spent the most money per megahertz pop on DoD and C-band. Why would they do that? If this spectrum that they were talking about, C-band and DoD, was so ineffective and so inferior, it doesn't make any sense, right? And I'm not saying that N41 is useless. I'm not saying that it's bad. It's not. It's incredible. I'm just not going to be tricked. I'm not going to be buying these ULF tickets, which continue to be this smear campaign of technologies because one carrier doesn't have as much as the others, uh, I, I think they're all great. I think they're all fantastic and they all have their place and they're worth mentioning. But I'm not going to buy into this marketing stuff, right? And, and that's here. We become a channel of truth. We just want to know the truth. We want accurate information. Unfortunately, you're not going to get it from these carriers. You have to actually do the testing. You actually actu actually have to use the networks and draw those conclusions from the use cases. We're always looking at the data. We let the data talk. You make good decisions when you have good data. You're not going to make good decisions if you're listening to people marketing to you, right? Because they've got a reason to sell you something. You got to make a decision as to whether or not you buy it. Now, at the end of the day, you're a consumer. You just want to know what's going to work well in your market. And that can vary from place to place. But as a national coverage layer of capacity, there's no data such to suggest that you know, Verizon and AT&T are worse off because they have a higher frequency capacity band. Um, you guys know the weakness of the N41 piece. T-Mobile's still trying to work through that with Spectrum Auction 108. It's fragmented. There's risk of interference with other issues. It's no different than any other Spectrum limitation. They're trying to act like they've got some kind of insulation from any type of exceptions, and that's just not the case. So here, we don't, listen to what carriers say necessarily we watch what they do and it tells us everything we need to know and we know that t-mobile spent the most per megahertz pop of any carrier when it comes to c-band and then they also purchase spectrum in the dod frequency as well so what's real they're telling you by their actions not by what they're saying tell me what you guys think about this i'm i for one i'm very excited about what t-mobile does with c-band and dod because here, at least in my market, in my experience, N41 has some of the worst uplink qualities and characteristics that can be fixed with C-band and DoD. So I'm excited to see them build it. Haven't seen it yet. They're looking for an all-in-one solution so they can reduce the cost of building and operating. But I think it's worth noting what's real and what's marketing. And, and it's important that we sniff this out, right? That's what we do here. Sound off in the comment section below. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.